I just uh, a few thoughts to, to share with you again today, of course, from the Word of God. And I have a, a, a sort of a theme that I have touched at other times before. But uh, the more I look at it, the particular thing of just actually a couple of the gifts uh, today, sister, sister so just a uh, gift. He talks, he says, uh, look to my goodness and my, my head and my theme to today is, is the goodness of the Lord and godliness. And I'm looking at these two toppings and actually goodness, when you look at it in the, in the Greek language, it's uh, because the Lord says that none of us is good, not, not one. Is Christotis, which means Christ. Because we cannot express goodness, the goodness of the standards of man. And a lot of things they do, they can be so wrong and still they call it, I'm doing good things. I'm not doing anything wrong. But so the, the Lord is expressing his love and his goodness. And in one of the words, and, you know, it's a, it's a very interesting, even myself, I've been a Greek, I could not comprehend even one of the words when you read in the scriptures according to to what you read in the context, he says also, uh, sometimes he says Christos, which is Christ, and some other place it means Agathotis, which is means innocent. And another place it means Agathos, which is actually I couldn't fully grasp the, the depth of this word. I understand it because that's my language. And I went to the Greek uh, lexicon and I never see a word expounds more than 20 attributes. And only, only a law can des describe this goodness, this love, this message, this riches. It goes on listed so what one word really means. And just, um, I wanna see as we're going through brothers and sisters uh, how privileged we are and to be able to behold the goodness of the Lord. We we'll go to Genesis, to Exodus actually, chapter 33, in the story of Moses. And we read some verses there. A very well, when the Lord appeared in the Benny Bush to, to Moses. But I read it from verse 18 onwards. And it says, and he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. Now, this is the question he's asking. That's 18, written from Exodus 33. You all right? I'll wait for you then. I'll read it again. Now, we're going to read from that point onwards to, to the end of the chapter. And he said, I beseech thee, show me thy glory. So, what the question is, he's asking to show his glory, to reassure him that God is going to be with him. Because he says earlier in the chapter, if you don't go with, with us, don't carry us on. Because without you, we will not be able to go anywhere. We'll be lost. It's all symbolic how it applies to us in, in our life today, brethren. And it says, verse 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. And I proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. So... What he's going to do, he's going to proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. Look at this. That's how you see his goodness, his name, who he is, all his attributes, which, you know, we cannot fully comprehend. Because all you see are through dark glass. So continue. And I will be gracious to, to whom I will be gracious. And I will show mercy to whom I will show mercy. So that's how you see and that's how you see his glory. And he said, there comes, canst not see me, my face, for there should no man see me and live. Because uh, nobody ought to stand in the presence of a holy God. And today we read brothers and sisters how the Lord Jesus Christ broke the barrier that separated us from God to be able to stand in the very presence of the Holy God. Verse 20, and he said, that I cannot see him, I regain my face, for there is no man see me and live. 
And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me, and there should stand up upon a rock. When he's referring to a rock, it's symbolic, he's referring to Christ again. And it should come to pass, verse 22, when my glory pass by, that will put thee in the cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And then he says, verse 23, and I will take my, my, my I will take away my hand, and they'll see my back, but my face should not be seen. So they had a glimpse of the glory of God, Moses at the time, but it's not possible to see the glory of God by in his face, the fullness of Christ, because he's referring to Christ here. Just to see the privileged position and we stand. So when we, as we're going through this uh, topic on that goodness and then what it means is Christotis, if you remember, the, which means Christness. And it was only God is good. It's only Christ is good. And our thoughts was he's is innocent and no one else is innocent. He was the lamb without spot, without blemish. He opened up his mouth. He was no guile in his mouth. The only innocent. And Agathos, which is uh, it's something that beyond man's uh, understanding to what it really means. And let's go to, to the Gospel of John, chapter 1, please. Go to the New Testament just quickly there. Gospel of John, chapter 1. Here it is talking about um, just a few verses here, but I'll just maybe I'll go straight to the point. Verse, uh, verse 14. Verse 14, chapter 1. And the word was made flesh, which is Jesus, the word of God. He took a flesh to be able to appear and dwell among us. And we behold his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now, when we go back to the Old Testament and we see how previous position Moses was, that the glory of the Lord passed by, but he could not see his, his face, but he saw part of his glory and his goodness and his richness of his majesty. Now in the New Testament, brothers and sisters, we read it again, this verse, because you need to digest it. If you read the verses before, verses 1 to, to 5 and so on, it's, it's appearing to Jesus, the light of the world, and so on, and it's referring to the, his life. that he lived, he was the light of man. He's leading us now that when the Lord separates us after we are chosen, that the life we live, as the Christians now, as the anointed ones, as the chosen ones, which he, he himself he revealed his glory unto us when he fills us with his spirit. Now our life should be a testimony to him and to unto the Lord and to the people that will walk in this dark world. I read verse 14 again. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, please, just a, a few verses. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Taking that path to, to begin to have a, a little, a bit of a glimpse how privileged we are, because like I said, how when people read the Testament, the Old Testament, read Moses, how blessed he was to be able to see the glory of God pass by. Now, the privileged position we stand is beyond any man's uh, understanding or imagination. It's so wonderful, the privileged position here we stand. And we read from this, uh, I go, oh, well, In verse, verse 13, and not as Moses, 
verse uh, chapter 3, Second Corinthians, verse 13, just back then to a story now. And not as Moses, which is put a vial over his face. And the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the, to the end of the, which is uh, abolished. In other words, he's talking about this vial, this covenant, this relationship, this glory. When Moses stood in the presence of the Lord, he, when he came down from the mountain, they could not look his face. He had to put a vial. And he's talking about this. It's going to become to an end because something far more glorious was going to come. That it was Christ. But they are reminded I were a blind verse 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 seventeen just to to finish to conclude it. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and with the Spirit of the Lord there is liberty. But we all, not some of us with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, and a change to the same image from glory to glory, even some by the Spirit of the Lord. So, but when we behold in the glory of the Lord, when we read his word, we see his love, his message, his expression, something wonderful is happening. We are changing. I read that side thing because we need to digest it, all of us. But we all, with an open face, beholding, as in a glass, the glory of the Lord. And because we're doing that, we are changing unto the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. You know, brothers and sisters, I just, I was thinking last night, I started to put a few scriptures out. And I was looking at the scriptures and it says, it's beyond me, my, it just so much to, to, we need to understand and, and appreciate it, how blessed we are, how privileged we are to stand in the presence of the Lord and to have this hope set before us. Let's go to second uh, Corinthians chapter three. Um, Best two to read from. Now we're reading the letters written to the church after the gospels and after the Acts of the Apostles, we're reading the, the letters written to the church. But the Lord is revealing something powerful to us that your life, my life, our lives is a letter. And it's written to the world to see. Look what it says here. Your epistle, a letter, apostolate, written in our hearts, knowing and read of all men. When we behold the glory of the Lord, when we're reading his word, we're becoming a living testimony to God. For as much as you are manifestly declared be to be the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in a table of stones like the, the, the Ten Commandments, but in the fleshy temples of the heart. That's why the Lord, when he gave us his spirit, he writes his laws into our hearts, into our minds. And as we continue looking unto him and reading his word, we're becoming a living testimony to God. And such trust have we through Christ to God words. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but a sufficient of God who also had made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the latter, the Old Testament grafted in, into the tables of stones, but of the spirit, for the latter killer by the spirit gives life. So it's, it's incredible 
brothers and sisters, we need to understand the importance of reading the word of the Lord. We need to understand our calling. We need to understand how precious we are in the sight of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 5. We see the, the, the expression of the fruits of the Spirit. Because we try to amplify the words goodness, it means Christotis or Christness, or, or in other words, there is also a thoughtus, which is means innocent. And so on, we can't understand it. But now, as we are reading the word of the Lord and how applicable to us when we walk in the spirit, what, what is manifest? What is the outcome? And what is the fruits of the spirit? Ephesians chapter 5, we're reading verse 9 to 11. For the fruits of the spirit, what it says there? It's all goodness, and this is what we're talking about. The goodness, the, 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 the talking is the goodness. And the Lord says, uh, on, the, on the gifts that I look unto my goodness, and righteousness and, and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. They have no fellowship with their fruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. No longer belong to the world, brothers and sisters. Jesus prayed the precious price. And Brother Bushes was mentioning about uh, the, the communion, all these things. And we are separated. We need to walk uh, as a Christian, so as, a, as the children of God, not just say we believe in only. But the change will begin when we start to pray, when we start to take a serious prayer to the Lord daily, more than once a day. And of desire to read the word of the Lord. It changes, it brings us to a higher ground. It takes the the the, the sadness away, it takes the fears away, it brings peace, it brings joy in our hearts. And, and it, it definitely that's why we can change. The only thing can change is the word of the Lord. Romans chapter 2, verse 4. He says, or despise thou the riches of his goodness, again, Christotida, which is Christness, if, and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God uh, leads into repentance. It's an incredible, it was nothing of ourselves, brothers and sisters. You know, it, 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 we all lost and we're all in darkness. But somehow the Lord saw the feet for us to open our eyes to see and our ears to hear and our hearts to accept him and our lives receiving his spirit. Now we're standing in the spirit's position and we have to be careful not to neglect such a great salvation that we have received. In the previous position, we stand only because of his goodness. Romans 11. Actually, before I go to Romans 11, I go to, to Psalms 107. In the Old Testament, the book of Psalms 107. I read from verse 6. This is the people of God. Then they cried unto the Lord in their troubles, and he delivered them out of their distress. And he led them forth by the right way, that I might go to a city of habitation into the promised land. And the promise that inherited was a blessed land given to, to Abraham by promise. But the promise now we have received is the kingdom of heaven. Because even Abraham, when he went to that land and he inherited the promised land, the Bible says that he was wandering from tent to tent. Like he didn't belong any longer, he understood it was a better city. 
was building in Mega, it was God. He's sort of far, far off. But when we know how standing in such a previous position, brothers and sisters, well, what they were going to inherit, it was the habitation, the city of habitation. It was the, the Jerusalem at the time. What a man will, it says, all thou men will, will praise thee, the Lord, for his goodness of his wonderful works to the children of man. For he satisfied the, the loving kind, the, 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 I read it again, for he satisfied the loving, the lonely song and filled the hungry soul with goodness. He's using this word, Greek word agatho, which is a kind of fine uh, words to, to, exp to expand. When I read it in lexico, I can see and understand all these words, all these different attributes. But this is, is revealing. He gave us his soul. Jesus is the express image of his person. He revealing the Father unto us. Such a sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, been bound in, afflic in affliction of iron. He came and break the chains that we're all bound unto and they send us free. Where the children of, of the free no longer belong to the bondage of this world. We go on to say, in Pro and we go back to Romans, you know? Actually, the book uh, of Psalms 139, this mainly in Psalms, I go 139, just read 17 and 19. The book of Psalms 139, very well known scriptures. 17 and 19. If you read the whole chapter, it's a beautiful chapter. King David understood the previous position that he was then. He understood God knows our thoughts, he knows our fears. And he saw the hand of the Lord, that the Lord was standing behind him and before him, and his hand was upon him. And such knowledge is too high, I cannot obtain it. How much more you and I, brothers and sisters, now the spirit of the living God is what is inside us. But the best day, 17 and 19 says, how precious, David understood, and he says, how precious also are the thoughts unto me, O God. How great is the sum of them. This scripture applied to us, what God thinks of us. If I should count them, there are more the number of the sand. When I wake, I'm still with you. Because nothing can separate us from the love of God, brothers and sisters. The only person can separate us from the love of God is you and I can separate ourselves. But nothing of this, in this world can separate us from the love of God. Let's go to Romans chapter 11, please. Read a couple of verses there, verse 21 and 22. Romans chapter 11, 21 and 22. Just a couple of verses. The whole chapter is beautiful. You can make a whole talk out of it, but I'm not going to do that now. It says here, because he told us to, to behold his goodness and the severity of God. For he God spare not his the natural branches of the children of Israel because of disobedience. Take heed lest he also spare not thee. We should not take our salvation lightly, without a value. He says, Behold the good, therefore, the goodness and the severity of God. Of them which is fell severity, but towards the goodness, if they are continuing in his goodness. Otherwise, they also should be cut off. So goodness is not just a word. We expanded what it means. It means Christotis. 
was Christ Leibner, all this entropy, all this innocence, this puteness, his riches, his kindness, all that. It is there for us to obtain it because he dwells us. He's given us the spirit. And they, we read about the fruits of the spirit. If you were to go and read it, the fruits of the flesh is the opposite. And here the Lord is, Paul is writing, and what happened to the children of Israel because of unbelief. They were standing in such a privileged position before the living God. But because they didn't take it seriously, they fell on the right side. And it was tragedy. And when Jesus came, the heart is for that part of life move. The Lord himself walked in the earth in front of them, fulfilling all the scriptures that couldn't recognize him because the heart was hardened. Let us be fearful not to allow our heart to be called cold and hardened. And we're just taking our just that belong to the Bible policy. And that's all I'm going. But our lives belong to God, brothers and sisters, not to the Bible policy. The Bible policy is just a church of people that will come together believing and knowing what is truth. And what we have received is the truth. We must allow his goodness and his love to be in our lives, brothers and sisters, to continue in his goodness. So let's go to the book of Psalms 85. Just I, I read this no longer ago, maybe a year ago to you. I read it again. It's applicable today to read it. The book of Psalms 85, verse 9 to 13. Book of Psalms 85, 9 to 13. And as you read here, it says, Surely his salvation is not in them, the fear him that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together and righteousness and peace have kissed each other. It's referring to Christness, to Christ. Truth shall spring out of, of the earth and righteousness to look down from heaven. The Lord Jesus came down from where the Father sent his righteousness, the expression of his person, Jesus Christ our Lord, is referred to him. Yea, the Lord should give that which is good. That's what he means against his studies, which is Christ's likeness. And our lands should yield her increase in the Greek language and the land, which is the ground we are also. We increase the fruits, the fruits of the spirit in our lives. The righteousness should go before him and should set us in the way of his steps. And that's a key point for us uh, to consider again today, brothers and sisters. Now he brought us uh, out of the darkness. He, you know, he, he washes, he cleanses, he fills with the spirit. He put us in a privileged position, in the path that takes us to eternity, but he's telling us now, he's putting us in the way of his steps, the way he lived, the way he behaved, what he come to accomplish, how he reached to the people, and he wants us to be like him, because it's, we are his representatives. We are the light of the world. We are the testimony. Our lives we read in earlier in, is, it is a, it's an epistle. It's a letter, manifestly declare the glory of God. It's only possible for the pray and reading his word and look his perfect example. He has to be, he has to be a focus. We will continue the Lord, the continue the Lord is telling us to look in unto Jesus, he's the author and finish of our faith. We cannot change without a key. We are nothing. He is the vine. We are the branches. We need to abide in him. The father is the husband of the farmer. He will prune us. So may there are more fruit. 
and I'm going to change him by the Spirit of the Lord from glory to glory. I'm going to give a live away this mortal body. We're going to change. We're going to like the from grab to a butter, beautiful butterfly metamorphosis. That's what we're looking for. But his goodness and his love has to be continue my trying to, to live in our lives, brothers and sisters. Let's go to First Timothy chapter 3, 15 and 16. Verse 15 to 16. But, but if I tarry long, Paul writes to Timothy. You know what Timothy means? Timotheos. Timotheos is two words. Timi means honor. Theos means glory. glory. God, sorry. So they, they honor God. That's what it means. The name Timotheos means he or the people that honor God. It says, but if I tell you long, Timotheos, if you want to say, it's right to us now, that I must know how to also to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and grounding of the truth. Remember the truth. Uh, all that other thing met together. It talks about Christness, like Christ we are. And without con controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believe on the world, receive up into glory. Jesus manifestly declared the glory of God in us, brother Sitzer. And we need to understand, he set us in the path of his steps to continue in the faith. First Timothy, chapter four. We read from verse seven. It says here, but if you Profane and all wives, fables, exercise thyself rather than to godliness. Godliness is not just a word, it is to exercise, to live like a Christian. Exercise is something you do. For bodily exercise profit a little, little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. Look at this, how profitable is godliness. Having promise of the life that now is and of that which is to come. Endless. In eternities. He's taking us from this life into eternity. He's blessed the life now, here. We need to exercise godliness. To live like Jesus walking this earth. A perfect example for us to follow. It says, this is five for sign, verse nine. And with all our expectations. For therefore we both lie by and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God, who is the savior of all men, especially to those that believe. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be an example of the believers. How gonna be an example of the believers? In the word, in the conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Godliness is not just one word. It's a, it's a reflection of the glory of God in our lives. The character of Christ. That's some of the exercise here is listed. A little against verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be the example of the believers in the word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, 
in faith, in purity, till I come give utterance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the prophecy with the line of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that my, the, the, thy prophet may appear to all. It's not only for ourselves. The Lord Jesus Christ, he did not come and die for himself or to show off to the people, look how good I am. He expressed, he reached to others. He reached to us to die 2,000 years later. And he set us in the path of his steps. And we need to exercise godliness because it's not only profitable in this world, but in the, in the life to come, in eternity of eternities. That's how profitable godliness is. Chapter 6 of 1 Timothy. I read from verse... Uh, Three to six. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to, to, to hold some words, even to the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the to to the doctrine which is according to godliness. The doctrine of Christ is according to doc, godliness. He's, he's proud and knowing nothing but doing about, uh, but, but uh, I'll read it again. And he's, and he's proud knowing nothing but doing, doubting about uh, questions and strifes of words which is can, um, cometh uh, envy, strife and, and rallies, evil so, uh, missings, the perverse uh, this is putting of man of corrupt minds and this uh, destitute of the truth. Uh, opposing that the gain is godliness for such would draw thyself. In other words, he's talking about the Pentecost. And I said, if you, if you give, and then you, you're gonna receive more riches. And that's the evidence of godliness. And the Lord has covered this point here very clearly. And it goes on to say, this, um, I read verse five, verse 5 again. Perverse disputing of men, of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness for such would draw thyself. But godliness with contentment is a great gain. The godliness we read about to exercise the righteousness and the goodness of the Lord. You know, sometimes uh, the Lord has says, promised brothers and sisters, I'm not taking out the blessings and the promises of God that God says he'll have his people to prosper. Riches alone is no sin, but the love of riches and you said, oh, because uh, I have so much, everything goes for me and I have so much money. I have all these properties and so much money in the bank. The Lord bless me. Maybe he has. But that's what he has to show. That is the, is the godliness in his life. is missing the mark. Which is less the qualities of godliness, what it means. Okay, we'll go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. incredible here, I'll uh, read verse one, the start of man, the start of the world. This know also that in the last days, perilous times will come. For men should be lovers of their own selves, the opposite to godliness. That's the reason I read these scriptures. Covetous, bosters, rare, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, no feelings, nothing. Truth breakers, false accusers, 
incontinence, feelings, despises of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That's the style of the world. That's the style the opposite to godliness of God. For of this sort, I read verse 5, five volume finished there, having a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof from such ten away. The power thereof is the Holy Spirit. They have all these attributes, they show in all these outside things, but deny the power thereof. Without the power, without the Holy Spirit, none of us can change. We don't even belong to God. Everything we have there is given to us from, from the Lord. And we are standing in such a privileged position, brothers and sisters. Second Peter, very close to finish now. Chapter one. Just think about how, how profitable is godliness. And godliness good content is a great gain. Second Peter chapter one. Read from verse two onwards. Right. I read verse two. Christ and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus, and of Jesus our Lord. According to his divine power, he given all unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness. It's his goodness inside us can be manifest because we acknowledge him. That's all it is, nothing of ourselves. There will the, the, through the knowledge of him that has called us unto glory of virtue. Virtue is something, uh, I have said this verse before, it is something attribute. It's only going to be, be described or, there, or it's a gift from God. We, none of us can have that virtue. Because he's referring to the virtuous woman in the Proverbs 31. The virtuous woman in Proverbs 31 is referring to the church, which is you and I. He says, well, who can find a virtuous woman? And the Lord had found us. He cleansed us, sanctified us, filled us with the spirit. He made us his son. He made us his testimony. He made us his bride. We need to acknowledge him because Jesus is our bridegroom. He made us to be one with him. It cannot be a closer relationship between husband and wife. In the Lord Jesus Christ, he called us to be his wife. I read the verse said, uh, three again. According to his divine power, he given unto us all things that pertain uh, to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that he called us unto glory and virtue, whereby given unto us exceeding and great and precious promises, brothers and sisters, that by this we may partake of the divine nature, Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, give all diligence. Something we have to do. We have to give all diligence. We have to work our own salvation and we tremble. We need to behold the goodness of the severity of the Lord we read in Romans. Severity of those that fall. And but I will have to be careful that we remain my time and continue in his goodness. And besides gives all diligence, add to your five virtue, and this at virtuous woman, again, the virtue, the attribute of the spirit, and the virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance passions, and to passion godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness. So godliness is not just, just one word. It's the character of Christ, the goodness of the Lord. And godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity, which is love. 
But if these things be in you and in a bound, they make you neither to be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and he cannot see afar off. He had forgotten that he was purged from the all sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence again to give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you should never, never, never fall. And that's what the Lord wants us to continue in the five brothers and sisters and to exercise godliness to follow his footsteps and allow his love to overshadow us continuously. We are very precious in society. I had other things here. He got us out of darkness into his mother's light. And we have this, this treasure in an earthy vessel, which we made from the dust of the earth, that the excellency and the power is of God and not of us. The Lord Jesus Christ, who read in Matthew 13, verse 44, he says, he saw this field, this treasure, and he got all that he had to purchase that field, which is you and I. He got his life for us. He got his only begotten son to make us his own. Are we looking the treasure the nail that is in us, which is Christ? as the most precious thing. I was willing to give all of this temporary life to obtain what he came to give us and to keep it and to treasure it as the greatest thing that ever man ever, ever received. We are very precious brothers and sisters. Let these thoughts encourage us in continuing the fight. And all the people said,